Okay, so I think another problem with mm -hmm. all this okay. is that when you find out that people do just as bad or worse stuff. Uh, yeah. And and aren't living up to the standards that they put on you. Okay. Or are even doing worse things. Right. So what do I do about that? Um, because that doesn't feel good. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And it sucks, right? Yeah. So one of the things that's labeled or, or one of the charges against the church, put it that way, is the hypocrisy of the church. Mm -hmm. That the church teaches one thing, but then does another, right? And if that's one of the charges against the church, is the hypocrisy mm -hmm. of the church. And and unfortunately, so often we see it we see it manifest as that being true. That you know, you have people and they're 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 claiming that they're so virtuous and so righteous and so holy, and yet things come out and you realize they're not that way. Mm. So, you know, we talked about Bill Gothard early with all the um, kind of indoctrination, you know, through, through the homeschooling and everything else, the curriculum that they were created, they created that was very legalistic. Mm -hmm. You know, well, Gothard himself was accused by 30 plus women for sexual harassment and molestation. Of course. Okay? And so now, Though no criminal charges were ever filed, you know, the investigation did show that he did inappropriate things and da da da. So, and you have you have individuals like him, you have individuals like Ravi Zacharias, who some may know was like a leading apologist, and then it came out after his death that he had just done all these horrific things. Um, and so the exploitation of 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 sexual workers and that kind of stuff. Like it's terrible. And my and so there's those charges and it just reaffirms to the to anyone looking from the outside in see the church the church is a bunch of hypocrites mm -hmm. none of them actually do what they say and and it, and it sucks that it's that way right whether it's these guys whether it's the pastor from Hillsong which is one of the largest mega churches in the world um, or their branch, the pastor from the branch here in New York City. And I mean, it's just like a, I just feel like every time you look around, it's a hot mess. What'd they do? It's, I mean, it's always the same stuff. And I, oh. it just, it okay. drives me crazy, right? It's, it's, it's sexual immorality or we're, or we're stealing money. And sometimes it's a combination of both. Mm -hmm. And so stealing sexual immorality. <laughs> Did I combine that wrong? You, Sure. So, you know, like it just it's it's infuriating because you see these high um, profile individuals just be exposed and 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 then there doesn't seem and there's always this attempt to cover up and that kind of stuff. And it's just like. Man, can someone just please own this mess? And some of them do because they have no choice because there's actual, whether it's videotapes or video recordings or whatever. And so they kind of have to. But the point being is all it does is it reaffirms the hypocrisy of the church and the, the notion of the, the hypocrisy of the church. And I guess what I'm saying is like, that's not all of the church, but I understand that hypocrisy exists in the church and and it, it exists in the the world of legalism that you're talking about where it's like people are asking you to live up to this standard but they're not doing it themselves um and i i wish that people would instead of saying instead of saying from this like high pedestal position of like oh you, all of you need to start doing this and living like me I wish we would still in, instead say, this is the call for all of us to look like Jesus, mm. to live this way, to look like Jesus. But like Paul, who Paul said, I'm the chief of sinners. I'm the least of all apostles. I wish we would kind of take that position of like, you know what? I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm okay. I'm like for me, I may be a pastor, but I'm, I'm just call me the least of all pastors if you want to. 
Because like we're try, I, I'm trying to work out this sanctification in my own life. Mm. And I wish that's the way it came across. Like in other words, yes, we are calling people to live lives of holiness. We're calling people to look, in other words, I say lives of holiness. We're calling people to look like Jesus. Okay. So yes, we're calling people to look like Jesus, but can we own it that we're all in that process and that we're all trying, including the ones that are speaking about it, including the leaders of the churches. We're of the all, legalistic churches? Yeah. Well, if, if they were if they were doing that, they probably wouldn't be that legalistic. Right. You know, if if they were if they were saying, "Hey, we've got shortcomings as well." Hey, no, they don't. we struggle with this as well. But instead, we just kind of leave it at this wide open thing of like, if you just do X, Y, and Z, everything will be good. Because obviously, I'm doing X, Y, and Z, so therefore everything's good. <laughs> like, I'm no. I'm pastor. Or I'm the pastor. You know, I'm the leader. I'm the whatever speaker. I'm an evangelist. I'm a worship leader. I'm a whatever. I, I just wish we would just be honest with like our own. And I'm not saying pastors to stand up there and like spill all of their mm. deepest, darkest secrets. But what I'm saying is just be honest that you are, as a pastor, as a leader, that you are going through a process of sanctification as well, and that you don't have every area of your life so neatly put together. And I think it would cause a lot of sense of people coming into churches going, okay, this is actually refreshing. This isn't legalism. Well, that's why on all legalistic, arbitrary issues, Uh I have no line there. (laughs) <laughs> okay why because then i can't be called a hypocrite for ever crossing my own line <laughs> i mean that's fair right i mean yeah or just own you know like i'll ask you where all the sin lines are right try not to cross those <laughs> right but everything else whatever okay yeah but we all <laughs> and i think we also understand that like for different people there's going to be different levels of things right Sure. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Well, yes. But, but and as long as what I'm saying is, but as long as they're not putting that on other people, right? Th- that's where the issue becomes. If I'm going to take, if like, so let's say there's, let's say, you know, there's someone and they're really convicted about watching these types of movies, listening. To this, awesome. For them. Awesome. Don't come over. <laughs> or, <laughs> Well, I hope that wouldn't be your attitude either. <laughs> I hope you'd be charitable to them. Oh, well, respectfully, we can't be friends. <laughs> I don't uh, we'll work through this too. Love you as brother and sister in Christ, right. however. <laughs> but we can't ever but hang we out. We can't ever hang out. <laughs> Okay, so maybe we need to work on this a little bit too. But, you know, because the, the charitableness has to go both ways. But I do think that, you know, when when you've been, when you've really encountered this idea of legalism and and this this idea of, oh, now I've discovered they've done all these things too, right? Like, we just have to forgive them. And, I mean, we, then we make choices, Right? Can I stay in this context of a church community or do I need to go find another church community? 